Hello, my name is Pierre Villon. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a dynamically generated part number. A common use case for this task is to have the part number denote which attributes of a configurable product were selected. The resulting part number can be used as a SKU, a single code defining the exact configuration the customer is ordering. I'll look at a configurable product I've set up called wristwatch. I navigate to the Watches category and click the Configure button for the wristwatch. The Configurator screen appears, inviting me to select a value for the three attributes for this product, Movement, Case, and Band. At the top of the page, an indicator reads Incomplete, indicating that at least one of the undefined attributes is mandatory. Notice also the part number appearing in the Configuration Summary. As I haven't selected any attributes yet, it just shows the code for wristwatch, the stem portion of the part number. When I select a mechanical movement, the part number changes to wristwatch-mm for mechanical movement. When I select a titanium case, it now reads wristwatch-mechanical movement-titanium case. Notice that the indicator now shows complete, which means that the band attribute was configured as being optional. If I select an oyster band, the part number is updated accordingly. So how did I set this up? I'll jump back in time 20 minutes to when I first accessed the setup UI. Under product catalog, I selected products and search for the wristwatch product. Editing it, I see that the part number simply contains a static value, W watch. I'd like this value to include the attributes I've selected. So I look at the Attributes tab where I see the three attributes for this item, Movement, Case, and Band. I'll open the Movement attribute and take a look at its possible values. There are three, Quartz, Mechanical, and Automatic. I don't want the part number to be too long, so I will want to use the selected attribute value's value code instead of its display value. But that leaves me with a formatting issue. I want the attribute value codes and the part number separated by hyphens to make it more readable. But what if an attribute is optional? If it's not selected, I end up with a hanging hyphen, which doesn't look great. I'll solve that problem by showing another column in this list, the part number column. This is a part number for the attribute value, not the product. I will copy the value code for each attribute value, but format it with a leading hyphen. I will do the same for case and band. Now that I have a pre-formatted code on hand, I return to the Definition tab and click the Formula Builder link below the Part Number field. In the window that pops up, I position my cursor at the end of the Part Number stem and locate the Attribute Catalog Code variable. It is conveniently the first item in the list. I then select the attribute I want the code for. I will begin with Movement. I don't need to select a specific value since this tag will return the value selected by the user. Clicking the Insert Variable button places a cat code variable reference in the expression following the part number stem. Clicking at the end of the expression, I repeat the process for case and then again for band. Clicking the Update button returns me to the Edit page for the wristwatch product. Clicking Save completes my configuration. I can now navigate to the Layout tab and click the Configuration Preview button. There is the stem value, and if I select a case, it appears in the part number. Selecting Movement adds its code to the part number. I can stop here and add it to the quote, or I can add a band.
the part number is updated accordingly. If I change my mind and select a different movement, the part number echoes the change. When I click the Add to Quote button, the part number appears as the line item title. Thank you for watching.